The next topic we are going to talk about is IPv6. So the initial motivation is that the 32-bit IPv4 address space could be、uh, completely allocated to different military organization, different uh, uh, ISPs, different、uh, university. So we we have run out of all the IPv6 addresses. So、um, we need a new mechanism. So that is IPv6. So here is the diagram format of for IPv6. It is very simple, much much simpler than IPv4. So we take a look at this、uh, field. The first four field, first first field right here it, again, right? Again, we need a four bit field to indicate it is an IPv6 packet or it is IPv4 packet. So in IPv6, it should be. One uh uh zero one one zero that indicate、uh, six, right? So the second part is priority. But as we mentioned before, currently all those routers does not implement any priority queue, does not implement any uh different uh, type of service, does not the、uh, TLS is not implemented. So again, uh we just uh it is just an unused uh, um field right here, and again right here, we have flow label. That is the unique ID of this packet. Okay, it is very similar to、uh, the ID, the fragmenta fra fragmentation ID in in IPv4, but、uh, it is just simply、uh, ID for this packet. Okay, and again we we have to specify the length of this payload and、uh, the how how many uh, uh, what is the TDL limit in this、uh, for for this packet. Okay, that is the same. But one different things right here. The next header, IP video has a lot of optional headers, but、um, we 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 don't specify how many headers, how many length of the headers right here. But we we provide an offset value. So if indeed you have some optional headers, you have to provide what is the offset of the next header. Where does where is the next header? But basically, uh, we don't we we don't we we don't have much head headers right here. Okay, so simply we just have one hundred twenty eight bit source IP address, destination IP address. That is exactly what we need for IPv six. And right here we have payload. Okay, that it is very simple. Very very simple. We we don't have checksum. We don't have fragmentation, reassembly problems. We don't have any. We don't have too many options right here. Okay, so IPv6 is very very simple, just like this. Okay, uh, but uh, there's a problem that uh we, we can see we can see this one, which is much better. Uh, not every routers in the in the internet support IPv6. So right here we have an example. Right,、uh, we have an example like this. A and B, A and B and E and F pro,、uh, supports. They all support IPv6, but there are some、uh, routers, intermediate routers. They only support IPv4. So if if you would like to send an IPv6 packet from A to F, so basically、uh, you have an IPv6. Packet and we will send it to B, but B knows that the file in routers only support IP.、Oh, sorry, IPv6, but B knows the file in routers only support IPv6, right? So it will do something called tunneling or encapsulation. That means the blue. IPv4, uh, sorry, sorry, the blue IPv6 diagram will be encapsulated in a IPv4 header packet diagram. Okay, so this packet can be transmitted, can be forwarded, can be routed, routed in IPv4 network. So after that. When packet when the IPv6 packet arrives at router E, 
Router E will take a look at okay, that is an IPv4 packet. Okay, but further, E will do unpacking. So it will drop, it will uh, remove the IPv4 headers, the red IPv4 headers, and get the blue IPv6 diagram and further transfer, uh, route it to F and so on and so forth. Okay, but there's a very important thing you have to uh, know is right here. Okay, right here. B and E, router B and router E. They have to know that C and D does not support IPv6. So B and E has to do such kind of tunneling. Okay. One of the important things is, is that take a look at the source and destination IP address. At the first beginning, the packet is from A to F. So in IPv6 packet, the source IP is A and destination IP is F. But when B send a packet to C, B knows C only support IPv6. So B encapsulate the blue IPv6 packet in a red IPv4 packet. But right here, the source is B and the destination is E. E is the first router that support IPv6 and know, knows how to do such kind of tunneling and unpacking. So in C and D, the packet simply just route IPv4 packet, the red one. So the source is B, destination is E, and so on and so forth. After E receives such kind of packet, IPv4 packet, it take a look at the destination. Okay, this is for me. And it can do unpacking to retrieve the original IPv6. packet and then use the original source A and F and so on and so forth to uh, to to forward the packet to to the destination which is F it th this concept is very simple but B and E has to know such kind of setting and do tunneling things okay the ex the I have to that is transition from IPv6 uh, 4 to IPv6 we do tunneling Tunneling is a very important and very trivial, straightforward mechanism so that we can uh, use IPv6 and IPv6 and IPv4. And currently in our textbook, it says around 30% of the client access Google service via IPv6. And NIST says one over three of uh, US government domain are IPv6 compatibility. But uh, in I, uh, the very first IPv6 uh, IP, I think it is introduced in uh, around 2000. But you know, after 22 years, and we have only 30% of the client who support uh, who support IPv6, and the rest of the 70% of the uh, packet is still IPv. Four. So the the migration from IPv6 to IPv IPv4 to IPv6, the, the adoption is quite it's not that good. It's not that good. Okay. So maybe it takes even even long longer time to to do such kind of adoption. Okay. So that is the entire chapter four, and I would like to share. Uh, with you some another some other information um, right here I think it is this one okay uh, we have a that is Tarnet o of course it is uh, in Mandarin so uh, you can take a look at the English part Tarnet stands for Taiwan Academic Network that is in in campus Tarnet um, manage all I think is elementary school uh, middle school, high school, and the university. All those uh, networks are managed by Tarnet. Okay, Tarnet is funded by Ministry of Education in Taiwan. So Ministry of Education, it has a computer center, and it will connect all the university, middle school, high school, elementary school, all those, those networks to the 
uh, Computer Center in uh, Ministry of Education in, in Taiwan. So it is a very large network. Okay, so in the very first beginning, the Tarnet, Tarnet administrator, they get, a, 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 they will help the university or the, the, the schools, uh, different schools to get their IPs. Okay, so you can find, a, um, I think you can find a list on the internet, but I think that is uh, in, in, in Mandarin. Okay, but you can see that uh, we have several different uh, Tarnet uh, university or schools right here. Okay, we have English name right here and domain name right here and IP address right here. So in early days, for example, the the first entry. Okay, National Center for High Performance. Okay, that is a very uh, that's in Tainan is an organization in Tainan. Okay, um, in Tarnet. Okay, the Tarnet uh, give the high uh, National Center the high high uh, center of high performance. The, the computer center, uh, an IP, a bunch of IP. It starts with 140.110, okay? And you can see that uh, it, it is a class B network. So the computer center, the high performance center, it gets around uh, 65,000 IP address. It is a class B network. Right, and let's take a look at the, the the other part. For example, the National Taiwan University, it's get a class B network as well. It starts with one four zero one one two, and National Jiangtong University is another class B one four zero one one three, and so on and so forth. And we can see that the uh, NCCU, okay, uh, National Jiangtong University, it gets a class B as well. It starts with one four zero. 119 so you have to understand all those numbers are class b um, network some network okay so for the entire uh central university we have sixty five thousand ip address but as we mentioned before uh those address will be further divided into smaller some net for example in nccu we divide the one the entire class B network into 256 uh, class, C, class C network. And I think uh, for some department, they, they can get one or uh, two or three class C subnet in their uh, department. And some, uh, for example, the uh, computer center may get uh, multiple uh, class C network to build their um, uh, computer classroom or to build their uh, public services but as you can see that uh, in this list okay all those university most of them are national university owned by um, national university and they can get a large uh, range of ip address but you you can see that there are a lot of different a lot of um um school or university they can only obtain a small range a smaller range of university take a look at this one for example you can take a look at, at this one um uh 192 192 okay 192 192 it should be a class b network right but it further divided into several different class c network and the those um school for example um for less than one um uh Let's take a look at, uh, for example, uh, those university, they only get a very small, small class C network. Okay. For example, the, the first one is Da Ye Institution of Technology. This is, is a university. Okay. It only get, uh, I think, three, right? A uh, two, 192.192.27 and dot twenty eight and dot twenty nine. It only get three. Class C network, and class three, class three class C network is is only about, uh, uh, I think seven hundred seven hundred, IP, IPs for this uh institute. But compared to the national university, we have sixty five thousand. IP address can be used in our campus network, but they can they can have only three 
Kasi Network. So that is because when that those those school, okay, those university, um, maybe they 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 have uh, a smaller campus. Maybe they that maybe uh, the Tanet the administrator had has only limited IP address can be distributed to those uh, different university and schools. Uh, but in early days, when those national uh, university when when in in early days they can get a larger uh, ISP ranges. Okay, that is um, the IP address I would would like to talk about. Okay, so um, take some time to uh, try to capture the your DHCP packet in your home network and see what is the IP address distributed by your DHCP server. And I think most of the time they are private IP address. Okay, and uh, take a look at what is I what is my IP uh, in Google. Okay, there are several different uh, com uh, several different website provide such information, so you can get um, IP. You can know what is the public IP address used by your home network, and all of the device in your home network use the same IP address out to the public internet internet. Okay. So I think that is all of the things you have to know about um, IP layer. Okay, take some time to uh, to review all those things. I I, I believe I have talked about all of the thing all of the things right here. Okay. So uh, I think that is uh, we have homework today. So don't. Forget to check out your Google Classroom or your uh, the, uh, the course website. Okay, we have homework this week, so I think that is okay. We stop right here. So all the uh, the, the 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 schedule is for the different classes is the same. Okay, we stop right here.